You're listening to This Naked Mind with Annie Grace. So I want to preframe that this is a super special episode where I'm going to interview my husband, Brian, and we got to talking for a long time. So I'm actually going to split this up and do part one and part two. So here is part one of Brian, my husband's story. Hi, this is Annie Grace and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. And I am here today with my husband, Brian, and he is my interview guest because he accidentally stopped drinking with my book. So we thought, well, I thought this would be fun. Brian did not think that this was going to be any fun. So Brian. Hello, Annie. Thank you for having me on your podcast today. (laughs) Thank you for being here. So let's go back to the beginning in your relationship with alcohol. Like when you were a kid, did your parents drink? Um, Not much, actually. They did a little bit. I think they drank very little when I was young. At least I was not exposed to it much. I know my grandparents, my mom's side drank some. And so I have a picture of me when I was a little kid uh, holding like a Coors banquet beer or something as like a three-year-old or something like that. So it was in our lives it wasn't a big part of it though especially when we were just at our house you know if my parents went out on a dinner or something they might have had a drink but we never really had it around the house we never really made that a big focus of our life it wasn't a whole big thing so then how old were you when you had your first drink uh well i did take sips so i guess i didn't have a whole lot and then my parents ended up getting divorced when i was in high school and then Uh, My mom would hang out with her friends and stuff and we'd be with them. And so we would have sips of her drink, you know, like whatever fruity drink she had, we'd take little sips of it, but I never drank at all in high school. Uh, And then I remember getting dropped off for college uh, on the first day and me and my roommate went to a, I think it was the, yeah, first day Uh, roommate and I got dropped off. We ended up going to a party that night and our friend who was also a freshman in college, he had an older sister who lived off campus. So we went to her off campus party and uh, we got drunk and, and got sick and the whole thing. So I, I really didn't drink at all, really, apart from having sips until I was in college. And, and even then in college, I, I didn't really get into it. Like so I, I drank yeah, you got drunk that first night and then yeah. you were just, that you turned you off to it. Yeah, it was hor- it was horrible. <laughs> uh, I mean, I still drank later, but I got sick and I felt guilty and it was not it was fun for a few minutes, but the, it ended up being a less than pleasurable experience really. And I remember being out there on the basketball court at night, college campus. And I had the ball and I would shoot it. And I'm like, oh, that's a perfect shot. And it would like miss everything. Like it didn't even hit the backboard. It was just like awful. I'm like, what is going on? This is really weird. And then I got sick and decided, I kind of, I did, I did feel a little guilty actually. I'm like, I don't think I should do that. Like something's wrong with this. This is not right. So I ended up not drinking very much in college, especially my freshman year, but I did. I did sometimes, but it wasn't like, you know, hit it heavy sort of a situation for me at first. So we met when we were like, I think we were sophomores or juniors and we met and just saw each other a few times. And then you went to Japan for nine months. Did you drink in Japan? This is the tell all. Not much. I did a little bit. I was, uh, there was another gentleman there in my, from my university back in Colorado, who was in Japan as well we became friends and he didn't drink at all. Like he didn't, or almost not at all. Uh, and so it was not a big deal when I was in Japan either, even though the drinking age is like, I think it's like 18 there. Uh, and I don't think anybody really ever cards you. No, it's not a big deal. Like you can just drink whenever you want to drink there. <clears throat> they have vending machines with alcohol in it. So you can just go buy alcohol out of a vending machine. And so, but I didn't do it very much. It wasn't a big thing. I do remember on occasion, we'd go check out a big city and there'd be a nice bar on one of the upper floors and we'd have a beer or something, you know? So I would have some drinks a little bit and try the sake and the shuhai, whatever, like all these other sort of drinks they have there. So I would try them, but 
it was not a big part of my experience, to be honest. So then we really kind of met because we just knew who each other were. We'd been in a few mutual places, but then we really kind of met when you came back from Japan. And then we went on our first date in Colorado Springs at the Golden Bee. Did we drink anything? We must have. It was like a piano bar. Probably. Were we even 21? We must have been 21. Yeah. Yeah, we were. I think I turned, I might have turned 21 in Japan, which was a little anticlimactic because it was like you could drink anyway, I think. So yeah, we must have been 21. Uh, We were 21 because, well, I'm older than you, but so I turned 21. I actually was in Vegas on my 21st birthday. And then were you 21? I don't know. Maybe it was our senior year. Yeah, I had to have been. Because we probably couldn't have gone to the piano bar if not. So we must have had a drink, but I don't, I honestly, I I have no recollection of that. Maybe it was I a restaurant either. too. I don't know that we were drinking. So then what happened? So then we started dating and we we did not barely ever drink. I don't remember drinking almost ever. Yeah, we did not much. You know, we'd go out to a club here and there just to dance mostly and that wasn't very often and we would have a drink or two probably but that wasn't like the main point of going out so we started dating our senior year then we went to uh for we decided that for our senior gifts from everybody instead of anything we wanted just money for a trip to thailand because we both wanted to go to thailand so we went summer after our senior year before we started working to thailand and i remember two times I think we went out dancing one night maybe it was just that one time that we drank anything for the what four or five weeks we were there three weeks I forget yeah like four at least probably at least four weeks yeah I think we maybe we had like a glass of wine one night when we went to like a nice dinner we like saved up and went to a nice dinner and had a glass of wine other than that I think it was just that one evening we went out dancing and other than that, we had like Coke in a bottle, oh, yeah, <laughs> a glass Coke. bottle of Coke and, and the garlic whatever garlic. else. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was really good. So then yeah, we didn't drink much there either. We got back from Thailand and you moved away to Fargo. Right. Yeah. And I remember being mad at you about getting drunk one night and having to sleep in your car. Yeah, I do remember that. And I did drink some there, but it probably wasn't as crazy as you think, being a girlfriend far away. And I did get drunk one night and sleep in my car. Uh, Yeah, so we did that. There was a bunch of, we were in like this bank training program, and there was about 10 of us who all just graduated college, getting our first job, and we're really just learning. It was basically like school again, but we're getting paid for it to learn how to be bankers. So... Uh, we did that. And so we would go out sometimes, you know, we'd go watch a football game or or whatever. And I would drink some there. So it probably took a little bit of a notch up in terms of how much I drank when I was living there. But it still wasn't like, in my opinion, I still didn't drink. I didn't drink every night. I didn't have to drink. I could go a week, maybe some weekends I wouldn't even drink. You know, my cousin lived there and I'd go hang out with the cousin. He doesn't drink. So it wasn't like a daily habit or something that I felt like I had to do even then, but I did. Um, it sort of ratcheted up a little bit. And not only does your cousin Mark not drink, and he's the only one of his siblings that doesn't drink, he's never drank, like never one sip in his whole entire life drink. Yeah. Yeah. He's never wanted to do that. So it's interesting. Yeah. He's an interesting guy. So then you moved, you moved a few more places and we were just still dating long distance and yeah keep going I guess tell us more yeah so we moved I went and lived in a town in western Colorado where I didn't know anybody except people who worked at the bank with me uh so I didn't really do anything I just wait for the weekend and then drive across the state and visit you or you might drive across the state and visit me uh but I didn't have much of a social life and I didn't drink on my own I wouldn't like sit down and drink in my apartment or anything like that so I didn't drink very much at all. It was only about six months or so when I lived there. And then I moved over the mountains in Colorado, over to the you know front range again, closer to where we 
live now in the closer to where you were living at the time. So we didn't have to make the long drive and worked there at a bank. And still, you know, we'd have some work functions, you know, where it'd have a drink or two, but no, not a lot. That wasn't a big part. And I had a roommate there for part of it. I had a roommate, part of it. I didn't have a roommate and my roommate didn't drink much either. I was like, had a bunch of people in my life around me that did not really drink that much, which made it easy to not make that a huge part of my life. So I would just work, hang out with you on the weekends, not drink a whole lot, and then ended up going back to grad school. So I ended up quitting that job and doing like full-time grad school. So I did that, lived more like close to downtown Denver, did grad school in downtown Denver, and, you know, hung out with you on the weekends. Didn't, I didn't really drink that much then either, you know, studying a lot, doing projects, and, you know, sometimes school classmates would get together and maybe I'd have a drink or two. It wasn't really a big thing then either, to be honest with you. And then we got married. Got married. And then we moved to New York. We moved worked in New York, York City. I worked at J.P. Morgan. Things worked changed. a lot of hours. And you worked at Chase Bank and worked fewer hours and... You went out with your friends. You really kind of got started more than I did with the yeah. drinking. Not only with my friends, but also by myself at home alone when I would. So it started going out because, you know, happy hour. And I was encouraged to go out to happy hour. But then eventually it was like I'd, I'd come home and I'd be like, hey, I could go to the bodega and get a glass of wine or I could go put on my running shoes to relieve the stress. And so I'd end up getting the wine and watching trashy TV and waiting for you to get home. Well, and like, do you remember we went on our honeymoon and we went to an all-inclusive in Jamaica and they made these drinks and they were like sugary. They're like milkshakes. Yes. They were pretty, they were pretty delicious and they had some alcohol in them. And so uh, hummingbirds or something, I think they call them. And so you, I would come home from work. I'd get on like nine or 10 at night or something. And you'd be like, Hey, I perfected it. <laughs> And you know, like your pitcher is blended drink and you'd be like, here, try this one. And the next night, try this one. I changed it a little bit. So you were trying to like perfect the hummingbird. And to relive and that. Hummingbird. Yeah. And then you'd make like margaritas one night. And like, I just come home and you're like, I perfected a new drink tonight. <laughs> Check it out. So yeah. we, that things, that's when things took off. <clears throat> basically, So basically what you're telling me is you kind of didn't drink a ton and then you got married right. to this and right. pretty much all downhill from there. Yeah. Yeah. And I really blame her basically. It's uh, <laughs> uh no, just kidding. Um, yeah. You were home alone and bored and found a way to pass the time. Yeah. And so we, we ratcheted. So we took it. And then of course you got to dinner in New York city. There's comedy clubs there's dance traveling. Clubs, I was there's... traveling all the time it was it was yeah it was this weird thing where drinking at work became drinking at home like just like that it was just and I drink. cut you off you were talking about like you know you're going to happy hour and that's where the deals got done and yeah well everybody probably knows that story if they're listening to this podcast so this is about you am I not your first podcast have you done podcasts before just kidding <laughs> Not the first podcast what the heck? I think everybody knows my part of this story um so yeah so then I started ser seriously instigating I forgot how seriously I was instigating I would you would show up at home late let's just let it be known it was super late and I was super alone when I wasn't out with co, co workers didn't really have friends few friends but very few but mostly colleagues or if I wasn't traveling and I was drinking at home by myself yeah. 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 And I worked at the investment bank and in the trading credit derivatives trading. And there were some people who liked to put it back there. Oh yeah. So you did have out, you know, in Central Park. I feel like this wouldn't be a complete podcast unless you told about that night. That was a weird <laughs> night. So uh, you were out of town traveling actually. And it started in the afternoon. There was my alma mater, Colorado State University was playing football. I think it was against CU, University of Colorado. And I went to a bar. I found a bar in New York City that was playing the game. Like you could watch it on TV because it wasn't like a nationally televised game everywhere. 
So I went to this random bar, it happened to be pretty close to the UN. And uh, I met this guy who happened to be a diplomat from, I want to say Luxembourg. And so we were drinking and I just, he, he, he just threw it back. He was older than I was. He's probably bigger than I was. And uh, I think he was having some problems with his girlfriend. He came down. And so I'm watching, trying to watch the game, talking to this diplomat. And, you know, and he was just putting him back, like big, just drinking beer after beer after beer. And I was drinking with him. And I remember at one point, he's like, wow, I don't usually, no one usually keeps up with me when I drink beer. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> cool. And then it hit me, uh, but it didn't hit me quite yet. <clears throat> so he, and then there was like a, one or two other guys that we all were sitting together drinking and talking and whatever, the game was over. And so uh, he's like, let's go to dinner. And he had a car service. Like he just had this black car out front. So we just like went into his car, got into his car and he took us to this like brownstone on the Upper East Side. And it's like a restaurant. And he tried to get us in, but I was wearing like a jersey. I had like a football jersey on and like jeans. And he was dressed like fine. He, you know, he looked nice, I guess. It wasn't like he had a suit or anything on, but he looked presentable. And then these two other people were with us and they looked like kind of, probably not the nicest either so they wouldn't let us in and so he took us to this other he's like all right don't worry i got another restaurant we can go to he took us to this other restaurant and we we're sitting there about to order and it was a, it was a nice restaurant and it was random just like these round tables and this little brownstones too it was a weird restaurant and so we go in this restaurant and uh sit down and i start feeling it i start getting sick i'm like i don't feel good i don't think i'm gonna make it this is bad so i'm like i gotta go to the bathroom so i go to the bathroom and i'm like this is not good and i just leave i didn't even say goodbye or anything i was young was like, I didn't, i'm like i can't i don't even think i can talk like i just gotta go you know and this guy was like he's being really nice he was getting into this nice he's getting us to a nice restaurant he's driving us around he was trying to show us his stuff and he was trying to be nice and i'm like i feel really bad leaving this guy but i gotta go and so i just like bolted and we were pretty close to central park and so i just ran to central park and uh yeah i got sick and ended up going to where i worked where i worked wasn't that far away and so i went to this building on park avenue and uh ended up being sick in the bathroom there i was sick in central park so i just vomited over the like this wall uh, in central park and then i walked to our place, try to clear my head. I mean, the, where I worked, um, got sick there, got in the cab when I was finally like emptied out and rolled down the window and went home. Mm. And that was it. It was a weird night. I've looked back at that. I'm like, like, that really happened. It was like some diplomat, like taking me around to random brownstones that happened to serve food. And it was weird. But yeah, that was a bad character one. for you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't do that very much. What is Especially happening? by myself. So strange. Yeah. yeah, that was odd. Very odd. Very weird. So then yeah, we saw his card. The game's <laughs> card back then. He had business cards. So then we moved back to Colorado and started having our kids. And for me, I mean, it sounds like I was drinking a lot in New York, making all those drinks, but that's where, like, I guess it was just very progressive. But for me, like when our, when I had to not drink for nine months, cause I was pregnant and I was feeling bad for myself because everybody else was drinking and having fun. Then I would just drink a lot more once I wasn't pregnant. And so I remember we would pretty much every night, at least split, if not one, maybe two bottles of wine on the back porch and play games. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we did. We had kids. And well, do you remember we lived with our friends for a little bit? We moved back to Colorado. We didn't have a house. We wanted to take our time to find the right house. So we lived with our friends. They were pretty into the wine scene. You know, I think yeah, we worked in the wine, wine. industry. Yeah. yeah. So we worked in the wine industry. So we drank a lot at their house every night. And then, then we moved into our own house, had kids and yeah, we were at home. So we're just like, okay, let's put the kid to bed or kids to bed and sit on the back porch and drink, play games and do whatever. So yeah, we did that a lot. Yeah. Then what happened? 
Do you remember we had a keg at our <laughs> baby shower? <laughs> it was like on a Sunday. It's like, I was pregnant, but I just didn't want the party to stop. And I didn't yeah. drink any of the keg, but I was like, oh, I have to, I, I was like, I was so identified by then with being like the life of the party that I ordered a keg for our baby shower, our first kid. I was still pregnant. I was just like really into my, I'm going to be fun. And I no. think it was like on a Sunday, it was like a Sunday afternoon baby shower or something. And not that many people drank out of the keg. And we, it's not like we had a huge baby. I mean, there's a lot of people there, but it was not worthy of a keg. I remember dragging the thing back. <laughs> Here you go. Still like over half full. Yeah, yeah. I still don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just trying to make everybody happy. Plus, I was probably just having FOMO trying to live vicariously. But oh man, I don't know. Weird. So then our first son was born. And we drank a lot outside. And then our second son was born. And I don't know for you, for me, I had. I didn't have any, I was, I've always had anxiety and depression, like pretty severely and was on medication until I got pregnant. And then I, I stopped taking the medication for a while. And then I was really good, like on the lookout for postpartum depression after our first son was born and I didn't have any. So I was like, all right, this is cool. And then our second son was born. I wasn't really on the lookout because I thought, well, if I didn't have it the first time, I'm not going to have it the second time. I don't know. That seems really naive now, but I just didn't even think about it. And I remember about three weeks after he was born, just like falling into this like pit of complete misery. Like I started clenching my jaw. I had to get a night guard. I remember just being absolutely miserable. And I think that's when I actually got like milk strips to test my milk because I was drinking, wanted to drink so much while nursing, but I didn't want to get the baby drunk. So I was like very practical about it, but I was just like making it happen, pump and dump, all that stuff. And I was traveling all over the world. So I was like bringing hundreds and hundreds of ounces of milk back through security. And anyway, that was my version of that period, which was really probably the worst period. What about you? Do you What do you remember? Yeah, I remember that. I remember you having a tough time. And I remember you went back and traveled pretty quickly after having him. So Sweet. you'd be on long international flights or wherever you were going. You were pretty busy. I was pretty busy. I worked in finance at a telecom company at that time. And we acquired another company and we were doing financials before that. And then we had to do some integration stuff after that. And so I'd work a lot and you'd be gone a lot. And so I'd like come home, get the kids, put them to bed, log back on work till like somewhere between midnight and 4 a.m. And then get up at seven and get the kids off to daycare and go into the office and do it all over again so that was an unpleasant time for me as well but it I don't think I had I obviously didn't have the same uh emotional difficulties that you had probably but it sucked it was not fun I don't think for either one of us and it was and we realized something had to change and I quit my job pretty soon after that so that was it was so unpleasant on so many fronts that you know it caused big changes in our lives, you know? So, and I'm not one to just like quit a job or whatever. So it was like, it was bad enough that we did some pretty drastic life changes, I would say. Yeah, I feel like I really that period. quit your job. I was like, look. Yes, you did. I, <laughs> <Just checking. laughs> that is my correct. job <laughs> is, is a job that we need to stay with. <laughs> And the one that has like potential. And so I was like, you got to, something's got to give. So yeah, I was like. It was a good move. It was tough to do it, but it was a good move in retrospect. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you're ready to see how this naked mind can help you on your personal health and wellness journey and want to learn more, go to thisnakedmindpodcast.com to learn what your next best step is. Again, that's thisnakedmindpodcast.com. We have all of our free resources, programs, social links, and more available for you there. Plus, if you have your own naked life story to share, you can submit it there as well. Until next week, stay curious.